Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. If one substance could define a whole planet, for Earth, it would almost certainly be water. Almost everything on Earth is linked to this most important oxide of hydrogen. The overwhelming majority of materials tend to be attracted to water, displaying what's known to scientists as hydrophilicity. Just about every bit of soil, rock, mineral, and life form on Earth is hydrophilic, in other words, drawn to water. Most living things depend on it for survival more than any other substance. It's actually remarkable how few things there are in nature repelled by or repellent to water. There is one case, a specialized structure of hairs on the surface of a lotus leaf that does display this anti-water behavior. Different levels or hierarchies of rough fibers, thicker follicles coated with shorter, finer hairs, these fine hairs coated with even finer hairs, and so on. This hierarchical geometry creates a thermodynamic barrier, keeping the water droplets from actually wetting or forming a film on the leaf. The lotus leaf evolved this structure to keep its leaves from getting too soggy, which would in turn degrade the photosynthesis performance and hurt the plant's chances for survival. Using this fractal surface, the water can rain down on the leaf without really making physical contact. Lotus leaves can even be submerged in water without becoming soggy because of the water resistance of its specialized surface structure. There are insects and other animals with similar special hairs and surface coverings to protect against actually getting wet upon an encounter with water. One can imagine a whole array of reasons why an animal would want to keep from getting too wet. So plants and animals have tricks to create water resistance. But what about substances that repel water by themselves without relying on tricks of structure? Are there solids that display the opposite of hydrophilic behavior? What's out there that's hydrophobic? It turns out this list isn't very long, and humans have invented and created most of these water repelling materials in labs in fairly recent years. Why is this? Why are there so few natural substances that show hydrophobic behavior? The reason comes down to an interesting concept in thermodynamics called surface energy. The atoms and molecules that make up solids are bound to one another in three dimensions, linked up as much as possible to reduce the number of unconnected bonds. The solid is thermodynamically driven to go on forever in three dimensions, forever uninterrupted. The creation of a break in this infinite solid is deeply unsatisfying to the material. Chemical bonds are left broken and abandoned at the surface. The material surface is in a state of turmoil and conflict, with a storm of disturbed bonds, surface charging, and chemical reactivity. Water is great at coming in and calming things down. Water can temporarily bond with some of the aggravated sites on the material surface and reduce the thermodynamic pain to the solid. One of the ways scientists measure surface energy, or how disturbed a material is to contain an interface or surface, is by simply putting a droplet of very pure water on the surface and observing the behavior, or the water contact angle. With a flatter water drop, more water is being pulled into contact to fix the broken chemical bonds. The flatter the water drop, the more hydrophilic or water-loving the material is. Most materials have very low water contact angles, meaning the water doesn't beat up and instead forms a flat film with maximum intimate contact between the water and the material's surface. Teflon and some other plastics are hydrophobic, meaning they don't demonstrate attraction to water and even resist its penetration to its surface. Plastics and polymers these mostly man-made structures deviate from this thermodynamic pattern because they're less three-dimensional crystals and more like two-dimensional chain structures. The chemical bonds of a chain are much less disturbed by the presence of a surface compared to a three-dimensional crystal. A polymer chain is usually only broken or interrupted at both ends. Still, plastics, things like Teflon and polyethylene, are alien in a way created from human imagination. What does Mother Nature give us that's hydrophobic? The 
materials like these offer all kinds of promise in terms of new and improved technologies and applications. Imagine all the things scientists and engineers could do if there was something we could simply mine out of the ground that could make water behave in this useful but unnatural way. Turns out there is something out there. A special class of materials, the rare earth oxides. Not all of them are hydrophobic, but a few of these super hard ceramic materials seem to defy nature and resist the attraction to water. They can actually repel it. In 2012, scientists started to take notice of this strange effect in this peculiar class of ceramic materials. Cerium oxide, lanthanum oxide, neodymium oxide, terbium oxide, praseodymium oxide, dysprosium oxide, gadolinium oxide. These are a few of the natural mineral materials discovered that show this strange water repellent behavior. There's even still some debate among solid state physicists and chemists regarding exactly why some of the rare earth oxides do this. What would be the toughest of these water repellent rare earth oxides? The best in class, the one that could stay hydrophobic in the face of extreme temperatures and other harsh situations. This material could be very useful for people. Turns out, there's a guy called Chris Rankin who did some work in this area many, many years ago. I was trying to find a material that was harder than glass, almost as hard as a diamond, and naturally repels water all by itself. Yttrium oxide is a special material, very hydrophobic and very close to my heart. It's been used in nuclear containment vessels and high-powered lasers for years, and only recently did science make use of its other talent, hydrophobicity. Recent patents show this yttrium oxide ceramic can be used to repel high-speed rain, resist ice buildup, and prevent scratches and abrasion on aircraft surfaces. Yttrium oxide and the other rare earths are already critical to a broad range of technologies and will only grow more important as society advances. They're used in just about every piece of electronics. There's one country on earth that has realized this criticality and has been developing a strategically dominant position in the rare earth mineral market. If one nation does control this resource, it puts the others at its mercy, economically and technologically. So much of nature relies on a partnership with water. Just about every material on earth is thermodynamically driven to absorb H2O. Being hydrophobic is very uncommon. Only the faintest number of things resist the primal attraction to this most common and simultaneously mysterious substance, water. Thank you very much. This is Chris Rankin with Vanadium.